I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about similarity. Uh, we went through similarity of different geometrical objects, uh, uh, primarily consisting of straight lines like triangles, uh, polygons, etc. Now we will go to circles, well, obvious extension. Um, well, if you remember my first lecture about similarity, I was actually talking about something like, well, intuitive understanding of what similarity actually is. And intuitively, circles are similar. I mean, all circles are similar to each other. They're all round, right? Well, let's just approach this mathematically. And uh, to do it, I would suggest the following program. Um, number one, we will talk about uh, what happens with a circle if you scale it. Well, obviously I will prove that if you scale a circle, you will get a circle of a different radius, but still a circle. Then, question is, um, uh, are all circles uh, similar to each other? And the answer is positive, yes. Um, I will basically build the scaling mechanism for uh, proving uh, of this similarity. So let's just do it step by step. And then a couple of side issues will be also addressed. So the first theorem is scaling of a circle results in a circle. All right, so let's consider you have a circle and you scale it using this as a center. Question is whether you will get a, a circle as a result. Let's just consider factor equals to two just for this particular example. Okay. Um, first, what I will do, I will scale the center and see what exactly would be the result. And let's say the result would be the point P. Because the point Q should go along the same line, but twice as far from the center of scaling as Q used to be. And now I will do exactly the same with A. And I will get point B. Now let's consider this segment and this segment. Now, as, um, as it was proved before, any segment is transformed by scaling into another segment which is parallel to the original one. Parallelism is very important in this particular case. And the second property is that the lengths of VP equals factor times length of AQ. Well, if factor is 2, VP is twice as, as big as, a, as a AQ. Now, what we also know that the triangle X, A, Q is proportional to, is similar, and that's why every element of it is proportional to X, B, P. So X, Q is elongated by the factor of F, and X, A is elongated, elongated by the factor of, of F. So B, X, relative to AX equals PX relative to QX and equals to factor F. So basically these two triangles are similar and that's why this AQ is stretched by the factor of 2 uh, in this particular case. And what's very important is 
that if I will take any other point, A prime, which will be converted into point B prime, I can also say exactly the same with B prime P equals F times A prime Q. It was exactly the same consideration, just considering this particular triangle. Now, all we have to do now is think about A Q or A prime Q or any other um, distance from point on the circle to, to, to the center. It's a radius, so all these segments have equal lengths. They are all radiuses. This is a radius, and this is a radius. Which means these two also are equal to each other, and they are equal to f times radius, where radius is radius of original circle. So, whenever I take any point on the original circle, I will get another point somewhere on a circle around image of a center of the radius which is factor f greater than the original radius which means all these points b and b prime and any other lies on a circle so from a circle from the image of all the points on a circle we will get points which are lying on the circle around the image of a center. But here is a very important um, consideration which you have to really think about. Um, if I will take all the points in this circle, question is, are images of these points uh, after scaling, will they fill up completely the circle or I will have holes somewhere which are not actually images of any point here? Well, um, the answer is that the filling will be complete, um, and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points in, uh, on this circle and points on that circle. And to prove this is true, what I will do is the following. Let's take any point on this particular circle and apply uh, scaling with a factor equals to 1 over f. And obviously, it will be shrink to some point here, because actually it's exactly the same um, as before. It's just different factor. It doesn't really matter. So from each point from here, in the original factor, I get some points from there. But if I will use factor 1 over f, Obviously, from any point on this circle, I will get a point here, which actually will be uh, the point which, if uh, scaled by the, fact, by the original factor f, will go to this one. That's why I'm basically uh, saying that for any point here, there is a source on this circle which will be converted into this point after the original f. And how to find this point? Well, take this point and apply 1 over f scaling. So first you apply 1 over f, got the point, then if you apply the f, it will return back to this. And that's how we found that for each point in the image, there is a point in the source. So it's a complete uh, transformation of circle into a circle whenever we are scaling. Um, it's actually an extremely simple theorem, and I spent like too many words probably to, to explain it. But I want it to be relatively rigorous, and especially I, I, would, I would like again to point out the necessity to, uh, to prove that every point on, on an image will actually be uh, an image of some uh, point in the source. So we will completely fill up the circle by uh, scaling uh, this circle. Okay, enough said. Let's move on.
any two circles are similar to each other. How to prove that? Well, um, if I have two circles, I can uh, congruently uh, put one inside another so they will share the center. Now, this congruent uh, transformation does not really change the similarity because similarity is defined as a combination of some congruent transformation like shift, uh, rotation, or, or uh, reflection, and scaling. So let's forget about scaling for a second. I congruently con uh, transform one of my original circles into the bigger one uh, so they have the, the same center. Now, now I will build explicitly the scaling uh, to transform one into another. Well, obviously I will take the radius of this and the radius of this. This would be my center of scaling, and the ratio between radiuses will be uh, my factor. So, obviously, any point on this circle, if I will multiply the lengths uh, by this factor, I will get the point on that circle. So using this particular transformation of this as a center and ratio between two radiuses as a factor, using this I will convert any point on this circle into some point on that circle. And again, as in the previous case, I would like to point out the completeness of this um, uh, transformation in, in, in the sense that um, if I will take all the points from here and transform them using this scaling into points over there, then all points of that circle will be filled up. How to prove it? Exactly the same way as before. Well, let's consider any point there and find a source from which I can obtain that point. So now, for each point, I have for each point in an image, I can find um, the point on the source circle. So that's how we point. Uh, that, that's how we prove that any point on, on an image is actually uh, the result of transformation of some point on the source. That's why we completely fill up the image. So now again, I have applied um, first. Uh, um, a congruent transformation. I shifted and uh, yeah, just shifted. We don't need to, to rotate anything. So I shifted the center, uh, and then I built explicitly the uh, uh, the scaling. Okay. Now, next theorem is a bit more interesting. Question is: Is there a scaling which can transform one? circle into another without shifting. So let's say I have this circle and this circle. Is there a transformation which, you'll, which will transform, transform this into this without shifting? Yes, with the shifting we can do it. Just take the center, make it here, coincide, shift the whole and then just do the stretching, the, the, the scaling. Um, but what if you don't want to shift? Well, the answer is, yes, there is such a transformation. Um, and again, I'm going to explicitly build um, this transformation. Well, but does it always exist? Actually, not always, because if you will take a different picture, And this one. Well, um, there is basically no such transformation in this case. So, my uh, point, my, my, my theorem actually is um, the following. If you have two circles and one is completely outside of another, then there are 
more than one actually, ways to transform using scaling one into another. Let's talk about one particular way. Let's have a common uh, tangent. and connect it with the center line. So the common tangent means that these are both perpendiculars So what I am saying is the following I can use this point where the common tangent is intersecting the center line as a center and ratio between radiuses as a factor. And then using this type of scaling, I can transform this into this. And that's what I'm going to prove. OK, now, uh, first of all, there are many different tangents, quite frankly. There is one tangent. There is another tangent. And there is this type of a tangent. And there is this type of a tangent. These are all common tangents. So my first statement is these two tangents, which I can call one-sided because both circles are on one side of the, of the tangent, they are intersecting the center line in the same point. So it doesn't matter whether you take this one or this one. But how can I prove that? Um, well, it's actually um, quite easy. Why? Because, let me put letters P and Q, M and N, and this is X, let's say. Now, this is the common tangent, which means PN is perpendicular to it, and QN is also perpendicular. So these are all parallel lines. These two radiuses are parallel. Uh, which means that these angles correspondingly are equal to these angles, which proves that triangle XPN is similar to XQN, because two angles are correspondingly um, congruent to each other, which means that the lengths of XM relates to the length of Xn as smaller radius to the bigger radius, right? Now, exactly the same thing can be said about these two triangles. Uh, let's call it P prime and Q prime. MP prime is perpendicular to this line, and Q prime is perpendicular, so they are parallel. So these angles are correspondingly equal to each other, as well as these angles. Doesn't really matter whether they are equal to those or not. They are, but it doesn't matter right now. So they are equal to, uh, to, uh, uh, to themselves, right? So again, these two triangles, XMP prime and XMQ prime, are um, similar to each other because two angles are correspondingly uh, congruent to each other. Which means, again, the length of uh, the point of uh, intersection, it must be the same because if I will mark it x prime, for instance, because, if, because x prime to m relates to x prime to n exactly the same as, again, as two radiuses. So since ratio between xm to xn should be exactly the same as x prime m to x prime n, from this, 
very easily follows that x and x prime should coincide with each other because these ratios are the same. Okay, so forget about this common. We just incidentally proved that two common tangents are intersecting the center line in the same point. So it doesn't really matter which point we take. What we do have to prove is that if I use this as a center of scaling and ratio between radiuses as the factor, uh, my a circle with the center M would be converted into a circle with the center M. All right, how to prove? Easy. Let's take any point A here. And let's say B is its image. And I'm not actually saying, I put it on this circle, but I'm not saying it's on the circle. It's some point B. And let's now talk about MA and NB. Now, since B is an image of A using this scaling, then every element, which is XA, for instance, to XB, or XM to XN, or AM to BN, they are all in the same ratio, which is ratio between two radiuses. But AM is a smaller radius, which implies that if I will multiply it by the ratio between bigger radius and the smaller radius, I will get the point B on the distance NB equals to AM times, let's say, R, capital R over lowercase r, ratio between the radiuses, which is a fact. So regardless of the position of point A, since AM is equal to the radius, and B would be equals to the big radius with a capital R, obviously, right? Because AM is equal to lowercase r. So all the points which are images of any point on this circle lie on that circle. And that's how I prove that the image of a circle is basically a circle. Well, almost proved. Because again, I have to, I have to prove that every point on the larger circle can be obtained from some point on the smaller circle. Now, how to do it? Well, exactly the same as I did before. Take any point from here and apply a reverse ratio, lowercase r over uh, capital R. And you will get some point here, which, if scale using the original factor, would give this one. Now, uh, is it always possible to find a center of um, scaling in this case, the way I just did? No, because if these two circles are of equal radius, then obviously this common uh, tangent would be parallel to uh, the center line, and they will never intersect. So this will not work. However, this would work. So let me now um, uh, concentrate on, on other uh, common tangents, which I can call two-sided common tangents, because both circles are on both sides. So let's forget about these points and forget about this common tangent. So this is true for circles lying outside of each other and of different radius. But if you have the same radius, um, the second method works, uh, works well. And obviously it works with the different radiuses as well. So this second method is more, more general 
because it's applicable to uh, circles of both equal and non-equal radiuses. Okay, let me just wipe this out. And uh, it's actually very, very similar proof. So you have one circle, and you have another circle, and you have, well, not very beautiful, but still, and the center line. This is perpendicular, and this is perpendicular. Now, once more, if this is the point X, this is M, this is N, this is P, this is Q, um, obviously, these two triangles, MXP and NXQ, are similar to each other because these angles are uh, vertical and these angles are congruent to each other as uh, this line is parallel to this because it's two perpendiculars to the same tangent. So we have two parallel and uh, transversal. So these are alternate uh, inside, right? That's interior, alternate interior angles. So they are uh, equal to each other. So these two triangles are similar because they have two angles correspondingly equal to each other. Which means that the ratio between radiuses is exactly the same as, ra as ratio between MX and XM. And now we will do exactly the same thing. Let's take any point here, and let's draw the line through x. Well, actually, in this case, it's this one. And, once more, consider these triangles. Not, not, not a very good picture, actually, but... So, in this particular case, what do we know about these triangles, AMX and uh, BNX? Well, <coughs> what we know is that um, they have uh, AX proportional to Bx uh, as as what? as mx proportional to nx. Since B is an image of A, relative to the center and whatever the factor is between the radiuses and M and N is image of M and these angles are vertical we have the similarity of A AMX and BNX AXM and XN are proportional to radiuses, that's the way how we built it in the first place, and these guys are proportional by our construction. And that's why this is proportional to this in exactly the same ra ra ratio, which means Bn is equal to Am multiplied by the same factor, which is ratio between the radiuses. So it's exactly the same proof. So from any point here, we get the point which is on the same distance from n, um, uh, and um, all I have to prove basically that this circle is filled up completely by images of points from this circle. And again, the way how I do it, I just use the reverse factor. Instead of ra radius to radius, bigger radius to smaller radius, I will use smaller to the bigger. And from this point, any point in this circle, I can build the point on this circle. Okay. 
So uh, this second method is, as I was saying, applicable even in case uh, circles are of equal size. All right. Is there anything else I'm missing? Well, actually, no. Yes, this theorem completes my just general discussion about, uh, about circles. And basically, I think all the theoretical material which I wanted to present as, as a lecture is complete on similarity. So from now on, I will start basically doing something which is the most important part of, uh, of Unisword.com, which is solving problems. And uh, uh, obviously, you understand that everything I was talking before about uh, definition of similarity and different similar um, objects and, and basic theorems is just a preamble to uh, solving problems, which is the most important part of this of this website. So, this is the language. Uh, this is the syntax, if you wish. Um, the the semantics is where the problems are. That's the purpose, and that's what I'm going to do in the next lecture. Now, meanwhile, I do recommend to review this material on unisor.com. Um, and as far as the problems are concerned, they are in the next lectures. Uh, always try to do it yourself first before you listen to the lecture. Um, I'm trying to address this to the parents as well, uh, because the parents can control the, the, the educational process of, uh, of their children. Or group teachers, for instance, they can control the educational process of every member of, uh, of the group. Uh, on an individual basis, and that, that's what I would like to encourage uh, adults um, use this web, uh, website for. Um, that's it for today. Thank you very much.